morning. You're on mute. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're not on mute. But I am like a fat lady in church right now because I just got back from Orange Theory and um, it's hot. <laughs> here. <laughs> so here I am in all, right. all of my glory. Uh, you guys have met Carly before. Say hi, Carly. Hello. Say hello. <laughs> so while we're waiting for you beautiful few people to join us today, and I'm getting my Beyonce on with my <laughs> fan here. Um, we can talk about Easton Accountability. So we were all doing the Easton Accountability Challenge for the last 90 days, and that meant we were all attempting to work out. So Carly, what do you do to work out and try to stay fit in this crazy little life of ours? <laughs> so I've been going to Orange Theory for on and off for like four years. Obviously COVID put that a little bit on pause. Four years? Yeah. Wow. So I only go eight times a month, but because it's such high intensity, going at least twice a week is pretty good. And then I can supplement with, we have um, a treadmill and some weights and squat rack in our basement. So I can do that. And I just joined um, the Fredericksburg Cyclists. So I'm going to start what cycling with some people. Like actually like outside, like cycling. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. You should talk to Sabrina. So Sabrina is a, a client, a friend of ours. And there's apparently a gym in Fredericksburg that is like, Remarkable. Her friends started it. They used to be avid OTFers, and then they started okay. this this gym down there. But it has like a bunch of classes and stuff, and a cycling studio, and all this other fun stuff. So you should talk to her and get the name of it. Yeah, so Sabrina, definitely. if you happen to sign in, tell me the name of it. Um, but yeah. So anyway, Eastern Accountability. We I think when did we end, Kaz? It was. Uh, we ended over the weekend, actually. Yeah. Um, so the last day was over the weekend, which is pretty cool. And how many finishers did we have? Oh. He's looking at me with a deer in the headlights look. <laughs> I don't know, but I'll tell you what, people jumped up and were consistent out there. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, we did the, this one just a little bit longer than we did last year. Um, just, I think, because last year we felt like it was a little bit short, but it was, yeah, it was full 90 days. And I know that Aretha did it because she was posting every single day. And then Jen had some clients that were posting every single day. Um, but yeah, we do it once a year. So, and if you still want to keep tagging us, by all means, Eastern <laughs> Accountability, baby. We are all just trying to live our best lives and not be completely ratchet. Yeah, <laughs> but it's a good reset and reminder because it's easy to get caught up with work and life and just put that on hold and then, oh, well, maybe I'll get to it at the end of the day, it doesn't happen, but instead just being consistent and being like, no, I'm going to make this a priority and maybe it's just walking on the treadmill but I'm, and working at the same time, but hey, I'm, I'm doing it. For sure. For sure. So the wine event, we had our very first client appreciation event for 2022, um, and that was fun. What did you think about it? This was your first season. I, well, you she was so she was our client before she <laughs> yeah. was our realtor with us. Um, so she'd been to our events before, but as a realtor, what did you think of it? Super lovely setting. I love those outdoors and just beautiful backdrop. You can tell they have weddings there, and we had our own separate section which was nice but there was a covered area the wine was fantastic we had live entertainment she was amazing oh, she was so great shout out to you girl you are so talented yeah this was really good to get to mingle and mm -hmm. celebrate together yeah and what that means for you is our past and future client east and ivy family and clients uh and friends we have these events three times a year we do the wine event in the beginning of the year and then we do our east east and ivy fest which is our big circus thing which i think is, I think is the most fun personally because we have like <laughs> performers and fire dancers and open bar and like all of these really fun and adventurous things um, that we do in Prince William County. We're talking about going a little bit more north this year to, to see if we can find a good space um, and then doing one further south as well since our area is expanding. Um, our service area is expanding with the addition of, we've got our Carlo down here in Spotsylvania, we've got our folks in Maryland, we've got us here in Prince William County and Fairfax County. So. We are all over the place and ever expanding. So if you need a shameless plug, if you need a new real estate home, come and find us because we got your back. Um, but anywho, so market update rates. Carly, talk. <laughs> <laughs> so we're definitely watching as rates have gone up, but they've sort of plateaued for the moment. Looks like there will be some increases in the future, but it's actually a favorable time to buy right now because... We've seen this market shift and there's less competition and less offers on any given home and they're staying on the market a little bit longer. So it's kind of normalizing more compared to how it's been. So buyers, like now is a really great time to look. And on the flip side for sellers too, for a lot of them it's actually a slightly better situation because 
a lot of them are running to, into this situation of like, hey, I can sell my home, no problem, but I have to buy another home. And mm -hmm. how is that going to pan out? Yeah, I like that you said it like that because I think that we were in such a shock over the last six months of inflation happening so fast and buyers coming out of nowhere and people writing eighty to two hundred thousand dollars over depending on your price point of these houses and so people whenever we I, like i went on two listing appointments over the weekend and it was the same conversation it's like well we're going to get multiple offers right we're going to get a bidding more right well it depends you know we're back to different pricing strategies where like more pre-pandemic pricing strategies where we're listing a little bit low in order to be able to get interest and show the value for the property and let human emotion take over and then start competing with one another um if you price high out the gate where you could have done that in the last six months and you would have still gotten showings and offers and all of these things that we're not necessarily seeing that listings are sitting exactly what carly said and they're sitting a little bit longer than we anticipated and I think there's a lot of like bu there's buyer fatigue out there from being in the market these last several months and freaking out and um, with rates rising so quickly. I mean we're in the we're in the fives now, um, with rates rising so quickly and your affordability going out the door. Uh, it is what is it? What'd you say, Katie? Yes, let the market show us. Let the market show us. That's true. Um, it's just it's it's a little bit nerve wracking out there for I think everyone involved right now because we've everybody's been hearing the news and we've gotten so used to seeing social media and being like oh my god did you hear so and so got like eighty thousand dollars over and they were waving appraisals and waving you know everything waving inspections and people were literally just buying anything because there was nothing out there to purchase um, inventory is slow like it is still low but it's starting to creep up because I think that there's less folks in the market just because they got bumped out by affordability. So it's, um, it's been, it's interesting. It's still, it's still an exciting time to be in real estate. It's still a great time to buy or sell a house. Exactly what Carly was saying. Um, you know, we, our VA buyers are going under contract quicker now. We've, you know, and they're feeling a little bit less pressure. Like I think we had four things go under contract this weekend, which was phenomenal. Um, and shout out to Jen who is killing it this year and so and so as well. Um, but Jen is really doing a great job of, and that's why she's hasn't been on reality is because she's out there selling these houses and dealing with the clients. <laughs> I love her, um, and Will too has been doing a really good job with meeting people where they are and doing exactly what they need. I will say that it's been a little bit tougher for our investor clients because, especially if you're financing, because it's extremely hard unless you're putting you know, 25, 30 percent down to be able to see a decent return. Like the stuff that we're seeing right now, on people are making like two to three hundred bucks over what their mortgage is, and that's just not really that great of a return for a lot of people to be investing. Um, like that, but if you still got cash, it's still a great time. Because what's that saying? The best time to buy a house is yesterday and today. <laughs> because the, the the prices, bottom line, our prices are still going to continue to increase, especially in the DMV area. We don't have as much going on here as far as like in the ways of market crashing and things like that. We're pretty stable based on jobs and government and everything being right here. Uh, so our even in 2008, our values still stayed pretty steady. So if you're a cash investor, let's talk. And even if you're a investor looking to get a loan, you just have to be very selective about the areas that you want to be in. And it's probably not going to be in some of the more areas that are growing up very fast, where values have risen very quickly in the last year. That's what we're seeing. Yeah. Yeah, so just trying to quell some fears around there because people are so uncertain with everything going on. But if you compare to like how volatile the stock market spin like real estate appreciation tends to be throughout history like consistently going up and you might have l little dips or spikes like the last couple of years we saw crazy appreciation but it's always going up and it's a good hedge against inflation which we've also experienced at really high rates recently at like eight percent that's crazy mm -hmm. well, that's so if your money's sitting in the bank like that's not doing you any good Yes. Might as well put it somewhere else appreciating. Say that again for the people in the back, Carly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting out there having these conversations with people because I don't think that they really understand how money works for you um, and where you're going to put it. So real estate's always a safe bet, guys. That's the reason why some of, some of your wealthiest folks, that's what they primarily invest in is real estate, and they don't sell it. I think I had a conversation with one of my partners um, a couple of months ago and he's like, why are, you, why are you trying to sell that house? He's like, why would you ever want to sell this house? And he's like, the only reason why I would sell this house is because of death and, you know, family issues or whatever. <laughs> whatever. I'm like, fair. Because historically, they appreciate. So hold on to it. It's just like the stock market. Write it out. If you write it out, you'll be fine. If you, if you want to dump it, then, huh, well, <laughs> TBD.
And this is a good market area to invest in because like DC is the capital, like yeah. we're always gonna have people here. It continues to grow and expand new business opportunities all the time. That's true. All of our people out there. I'm not seeing many comments. That means you're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Don't mute yourself. I actually really like my church lady fan. <laughs> this is great during COVID because people, they can't hear you or you can't hear them. And then you're just like, hi. <laughs> oh, she works really well as a fan right now. Anyway, what else you got? What else are you seeing out there? Like as far as prices rising? Because you've been in real estate, what, six months now? Yeah. About okay. that. Yeah. What's your yeah. experience here, Brand? I mean, we've still seen prices continue to increase. It's just um, not like at a crazy rate the last couple of months. Like it's gone up a little bit. Days on market have definitely been a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And then. And when you say a little bit longer, what do you mean? Like. So, like, there were a lot of homes that were listed, and it might be that weekend within three or three to six days, and the house is gone. And now we're seeing homes staying on the market more, more around like a month. Of course, it depends on the home, the condition, and the area. And the area. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, long gone are the days where you could just throw a house up and not have to get it ready. We are still, I think Jennifer and I talked about this on one of our last realities, is like we are still, we're going in there and we have to prep the house because if you're going to get top dollar and if you're going to go under contract quickly and you're going to be able to leverage um, folks who, <laughs> Katie says, your fan is cracking me up. I love my fan. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're, where, I squirreled out. What was I saying? I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, if you're fixing up your house, um, fixing up your house, long gone are the days of just letting it sit um, or just putting it on the market without doing anything. Like we're bringing our contractors in, we're making sure the carpet is stretched and the paint is good and that the tiles aren't cracked up and the lights, you know, like everything is good because people want move in ready. And I think that's another thing, like it's a misconception. It's like, well, it's like, well, we can just give a carpet credit. Uh, that That's just going to go towards their closing costs. And we don't know in this market if somebody would have asked for closing costs or not. So then you're not actually giving them anything. So it's like taking all of these things into consideration um, and not doing yourself a disservice, especially because like we work with contractors who can build a settlement. So it's like, we'll go in there and we'll make the repairs, we'll replace the carpet, and then they get paid at the settlement table, which is a huge help. Um, to everybody that we've ever worked, shout out to One Step Floors. You guys are awesome. You're not on mute. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, people are super visual, so like as soon as they walk in the door, they have instant feelings towards the place. Mm -hmm. And if it's in good condition, it's been staged well, it's pretty. Like people have favorable opinions, they're more likely to overlook things. Yeah, and that's the conversation that we have a lot. Is like, and whenever you walk into a house, think about this being in the buyer in, the, in a buyer's shoes. So you walk into a house, literally everything you're forming an immediate opinion because we are meaning making machines as humans the second that you walk in. So basically you have five seconds to make your first impression. And if everything, the light touches, um, is not perfect, not beautifully appealing, they've already started to rule your house out and then they're just gonna keep ticking away as they go through. It's like, uh, but if they see it and they're like, oh my God, and they're in love at hello, or they like it at hello, then they might overlook the cracking paint, they might overlook the seam, they might overlook the busted, um, light switch, you know, things like that. And they're still willing to work with the house because they can see the potential in it. So the market is shifting. We're going back to sellers. You actually have to try. Um, <laughs> and we would love to help you try because that is what we are great at. Yeah. It's like, that's what I keep telling you. It's like, we are a marketing company. We happen to be realtors, but we are a marketing company at the end of the day and we know how to market your property beautifully. But what else we got? Anything? Yeah. Awesome. Well, this is a short and sweet, real, 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 God, this is the problem. So I went to Orange Theory this morning and we were supposed to go to the 730 class and then they have a very strict five minute rule and we got there seven minutes because we hit some unexpected traffic on the road getting there and I was so mad um, because they wouldn't let us in so they bumped us to the final class and so literally we got out of class and I'm, that's why I'm sitting here fanning myself, but it's like my, my whole day was like pushed. <laughs> so, I'm like, oh, my brain doesn't work. My mouth isn't working. I'm like, I got, we got meetings in 20 minutes and listing appointments. I'm like, what is going on today, guys? But whatever. Does your body good. So get out there and be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But really, I think this is really it, guys. This is short and sweet today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, if you are looking to buy or sell or if you just have questions about buying or selling in the future and what this market means and what the shift actually means, give us a call. We're happy to chat with you. 
um, about our predictions, um, about what the economists are saying and what we're looking to expect towards the end of the year towards uh, with interest rates. Um, and if you're a realtor and you're looking for a new home, please come and find us, being with our awesome place over here. We are with the top 1% in the US and we have all of the tools that you need to support your business going forward, especially during the shift. Anyways, we love you. Have a wonderful day. We will see you on the flip side.